August garden. I'm doing some harvesting tonight, thought I'd bring y'all along, show you what's growing, and what the August garden looks like in Middle Tennessee. Okra grows legit like a weed, so you often, when it's getting hot, you have to come down here twice a day sometimes to harvest it, and I can see one that's kind of gotten away from me. Um, this, this one actually isn't too bad, but for raw eating, I like them to be a little smaller than that. Uh, I don't let them get much bigger than that because they just get really like woody and they're just hard to like bite through. So I like mine a little smaller. So this is a hill country red and these I like at that size because they're a little wider and this is very yummy for fresh eating. Cucumbers, this time of year, they just get crunchy and you can see the leaves. I mean, there's some blight there and stuff, but they're still producing fruit. So as long as they are producing fruit, I let them go and I let them stay. This is a salt and pepper variety. Um, it's kind of like a pickling cucumber. So I like to pick them around this size. The seeds aren't real big in this one and they're really yummy for fresh eating or pickles. This trellis is definitely uh, powdery mildew. Kind of got the best of this one is you can kind of see that white fuzzy stuff on there. That is powdery mildew. I usually for that will spray um, a solution of milk. So like equal parts milk and water on the plant and that slows it down. Doesn't completely stop it always, slows it down. So I'm still harvesting a lot of cucumbers from this trellis. I often get the question of why a cucumber is misshaped and that is usually because of watering. So like if they are dry for a long while and then get like a lot of rain, they can get wonky shaped, but this cucumber is still perfectly good to eat. A straight cucumber is just a well-watered plant. This one was hiding. So this one is way too big. So this is a pickling cucumber and they're not meant to be picked big. So this is a little large for a pickling cucumber, especially when they start to get white like that. Um, but I'll try this and if it's not like bitter tasting, I'll still use it for pickles. If not, if it is, this is a good relish cucumber. I planted cucumbers everywhere. And so I planted one at the base of this sunflower stalk and I'm letting it grow up the sunflower. <laughs> it's working. Here's another makeshift trellis. I found a sturdy stick in the woods, tied some string to my main thing here and I'm just training it to go on this thing. So this is the perfect size that I like my cucumbers. Uh, it's not too big and this is a pickling cucumber so this one is meant to be this size but this is a perfect size peppers have been kind of slow this year i do think it's because we had a cooler spring than usual and peppers don't like really cool nights so they're just going slow but they're growing really nice they look healthy they're nice and green they're setting flowers so we'll get there they're just slower so <clears throat> this is my first year that <coughs> I just swallowed a bug. <coughs> this is my first year that I have grown enough of squash for our family. Now I've planted an insane amount of squash, but here in Tennessee, the vine borers are really bad and I have to plant a lot to get squash. But this guy, this is the best squash I've ever grown. He's been thriving. It's a black beauty variety. And you can see that the stem is damaged by vine borers, but there's still going. So I'll show you down here. That is all vine borer damage. There's evidence that there's multiple in there probably, but he's still going strong, making fruit. Because this squash plant did so well, I wanna save seeds from this plant. So I have this big one in here that I'm letting grow because I wanna save seeds and it's big. But I'll probably let it go for a little bit um, because the plant is showing signs that it's officially dying. So I wanna let this guy go. I'm gonna save seeds because that seed is gonna be amazing for next year's garden because it adapts and to your climate and your soil and stuff. So every year you save a seed, that plant is stronger for your garden. Do it. <laughs> the zinnias have just been absolutely beautiful this year. They are just setting so many flowers. And with zinnias, the more you cut them, the more they grow. So if you have zinnias that are like falling over, it just means you need to cut them more so they bush out. So you can see that I cut this zinnia off. Well then it forced this side shoot next to it 
to grow a flower. Rather than growing straight up again, it's going off to the side. So cut your zinnias, they'll keep producing. But there's some really pretty ones in here. This is an early pro prolific squash and I've also found that this variety of squash has done really well um, holding up against the vine borers. Again, there's evidence of vine borers in the stalk, but it's still producing squash, so I'm not pulling it. And here's one. And with these, I just turn, twist, and they pop off. This is my pole bean trellis, and there is some damage of blight and stuff, but they're still producing a ton of beans. And this is about the size that I like to harvest my green beans. That just fell off. Well, this is a banana pepper. Banana peppers are usually the first peppers to produce, but this one fell off. This one is still really green. Banana peppers, the name, they really should be the color of a banana and they'll be nice and sweet. This one I'll just dice up and throw in pickle relish or something. There's zinnias all over the garden. Zinnias bring the pollinators and you want the pollinators in your garden to pollinate all your stuff. So I plant zinnias everywhere. This is a squash that I planted later in the season, and this is one of my favorites. I'm forgetting the name of it, but I'll let that one get a little bit bigger. Probably tomorrow or the next day I'll pick that. In here I have dragon tongue bush beans. I don't think any are ready yet. But that's a new one I'm growing this year, and I'm excited to try them. Back here I have a smaller cucumber. Again, I'm blanking on the name. This is about the size these get. Um, my kids have really loved these. They've been really good. I can, we'll put the name on the screen. I'll look it up, but they've been really yummy. This is my chaotic mess, but I love it. <laughs> uh, it's my flower section. We have echinacea. Echinacea grows really well in the South. And I've been saving that for tea. You can save the petals, the leaves, the stalk. All of it is good, the roots. So all of this is just to draw the pollinators. The elephant ears was just something I wanted to grow, so I threw them in there, and they're gigantic. <laughs> they're pretty big. <laughs> so this whole section is peppers. Peppers are being slow. Tomatoes, um, they're starting to wind down. The bush variety are really all turning red. We've harvested a ton of tomatoes, but I'll probably come out here then tomorrow or the next day I am having some issues with squirrels taking my tomatoes right when I want to pick them. So I've been picking them a little bit earlier and letting them ripen on our counter. That way I actually get to eat them and the squirrels don't. Or my chickens. Did you get that? Here's a cayenne that's ready. We grow cayenne just to dry it out for a crushed red pepper. And these I just hang to dry. I take a big sewing needle and I sew through the stem with some string and then I just tie them in like a long strand to dry until they're nice and crispy. So this is all of my hot peppers in this row. And these are jalapenos. You can see the baby jalapenos on there. They're still a little young to pick. I did just come out here. Oh, here's one that I... So this is about the size that I like to pick those and we use these for cowboy candy, fresh eating, pickled jalapenos. This is Rachel's little garden here. This is something new that she's trying this year. It's called Jacob's Tears. And these little things dry out and they act as beads and they actually have like a natural hole through them. So we need to look that up. If anyone has grown Jacob's Tears, let me know when you harvest it. <laughs> Cause I don't know. Something that's really fun about having chickens and compost is we give all of our like cantaloupe, watermelon seeds to our chickens. And I put some of that compost on Rachel's garden this year and we got a surprise plant in her garden that's doing amazing. There is like, she has like four or five melons back here growing. Here's the biggest one. We're waiting for this one. So the tendril right here, so this is where it's attached. And then this tendril right here, when that's all dried up, it means that that is good. She wants to put some chicken wire or something around it because 
In past seasons, we have had critters like split them open right when you want to pick them. I'm not sure about picking melons early. If you've grown melons, can you pick them early and will they ripen on the counter? Melons are a new thing to me. Tomatoes are officially exceeding the trellis. And so what I've been doing is when they get so high that I can't even reach them, I try to clip the top there and that just forces side shoots and also forces any fruit that is down below to ripen. So I've been trying to do that, but it's getting like jungle-like, but August is just like that. August is a jungle garden, just gotta embrace it. There's lots of really yummy cherry tomatoes on here. I like to pick them a little early and the bugs and stuff don't get them. Caterpillars, birds. These, okay, if there's one cherry tomato, I can tell y'all to grow. It is these champagne bubble tomatoes. They are so good and so sweet. They have been my absolute favorite to grow. They're hiding. The plants are still, still producing. Here's another surprise melon from the compost pile and we're not sure what it is because it's striped. It's not a cantaloupe. So I don't know what that is. Whoops, okay. That one I just pulled the whole branch off. This is also a fun basil that I've grown this year. It's called lettuce leaf basil and it's really good for wraps. It's a much bigger basil leaf and it has like a really good basil flavor. So I like to harvest this for tomatoes, salads, eggs, squash. Basil is really good on squash. Just a quick little garden update, garden harvest for the evening. This will be lunch tomorrow. Thanks for joining me in the garden tonight on this August evening. I hope you have a good end of your summer.